As Jesus looks to the cross, he tells the disciples that God's kingdom is very different from the kingdoms of this world. And the cross is central to seeing how God's power is revealed. These are words from Psalm 55. Listen to my prayer, O God. Do not ignore my plea. Hear me and answer me. My thoughts trouble me and I am distraught. My heart is in anguish within me. The terrors of death have fallen on me. Fear and trembling have beset me. Horror has overwhelmed me. I said, oh, that I had the wings of a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. I would flee far away and stay in the desert. I would hurry to my place of shelter, far from the tempest and storm. I see violence and strife in the city. Destructive forces are at work in the city. Threats and lies never leave its streets. As for me, I call to God and the Lord saves me. Evening, morning and noon, I cry out in distress and he hears my voice. He rescues me unharmed from the battle waged against me, even though many oppose me. Cast your burdens on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. As for me, I trust in you. So we pray, Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our humanity and to suffer death upon the cross. Grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our reading is from Mark chapter 13, beginning at verse 1. As he was leaving the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what massive stones, what magnificent buildings. Do you see all these great buildings, replied Jesus? Not one stone here will be left on another. Every one will be thrown down. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us when these things will happen, and what will be the sign that they are about to be fulfilled? Jesus said to them, Watch out that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name, claiming I am he, and will deceive many. When you hear of wars and rumours of wars, don't be alarmed. Such things must happen. But the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places and famines. These are the beginning of birth pains. You must be on your guard. You'll be handed over to the councils and flogged in the synagogues. And on account of me, you will stand before governors and kings as witnesses to them. And the gospel must first be preached to all nations. Whenever you're arrested and brought to trial, don't worry beforehand about what you will say. Just say whatever is given to you at the time, for it's not you speaking, but the Holy Spirit. God will betray, brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. All men will hate you because of me, but he who stands firm to the end will be saved. The temple was an amazing place. 35 acres of prime real estate in the middle of Jerusalem that Herod had developed in true Donald Trump style. It was a statement not of his devotion to God, but of his sense of personal power. It was meant to impress, but Jesus saw it for what it truly was. Another Tower of Babel, another testimony to human pride and glory. And we still have lots of those in the world today, 
and lots of people who want to impress by shows of personal power and prestige. The kingdom of God is not shaped that way at all. So Jesus says, each stone will be thrown down and not one stone shall be left upon another. That's what happened in the case of Jerusalem. In AD 70, the Romans under Vespasian destroyed the temple, raised it to the ground. But the thing is, we just keep on building more temples to our own pride. We never learn. But Jesus shows a different way. The way of the cross leads to life with God. As we acknowledge our weakness, we find his strength. In confessing our sin, we find forgiveness. In humbling ourselves at the foot of the cross, we are lifted up to become his children, members of his kingdom. Let's think about that as we reflect on the words of this song. What gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer? There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hold, my shepherd will defend me. Through the deepest valley he will lead. Oh, the night has been won and I shall overcome. Yet not I, but through Christ in me. No fate I dread, I know I am forgiven. The future sure, the price it has been paid. For Jesus bled and suffered for my pardon and he was raised to overthrow the grave. To this I hold, my sin has been defeated. Jesus now and ever is my plea. Oh, the chains are released. I can sing I am free. Yet not I, but through Christ in me. Lord, may we never be seduced by the images of power and success in this world. But may we also have the perspective of Jesus. May we see through the temporary to the eternal. May we grasp what it means to be members of the kingdom of God, not afraid to suffer, not afraid to die, but knowing that there is a much greater power at work in our lives, that it is not I, but Christ in me. So we pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May Christ, who bore our sins on the cross, set us free to serve him with joy, now and forevermore. Amen.